Hello everyone, welcome to your first physics tutorial. So let's just quickly talk about this tutorial series. Basically this tutorial series is intended for a very specific audience. It's intended for college level physics students who also need to at least review the math. Um, a lot of like uh, other physics tutorials on the web tend to assume that you already know the math very well and they just teach you the physics. So this is for those students who need to at least review, if not kind of learn the math, um, because they're just not good at the math. And you need to be good at the math in order to succeed in physics. Uh, it's also for college level physics students who are already good at the math and they just want to get an intuitive understanding of physics. I try to look at physics from many different perspectives and give you guys an intuition. But it is not, it's definitely not for those who are really good at math or those who are really good at physics because if you're one of those students then this tutorial is going to go extremely slow for you because I'm going to be explaining everything. So it's just going to be really boring and really slow for you. But if you are the type of student who is taking a college physics class and you just really need to brush up on the math or you would like to learn the math or at least learn the math in the context of physics then this tutorial is definitely for you. Now as I said earlier there's many tutorial series on physics out there so why would you pick this one? There are several reasons. The first one is that I'm gonna go extremely slow. Now for some of you this is not a good thing and for others it is a good thing. So this is clearly meant for those of you who want to learn physics slowly, you want to digest it, you want to understand it, and you want to retain the information. I'm also going to be looking, because I'm going to be going slowly, I'm going to be looking at all the topics from many different perspectives. Now, um, throughout physics, I've noticed that you can look at anything um, in physics from two types of perspectives. You can look at things from an intuitive perspective and you can look at things from a mathematical perspective. And oftentimes, you can look at things from several different intuitive or several different mathematical perspectives. So I'm going to be looking at the same topic, at the same problem, from a lot of different perspectives, and that's really going to hammer in the concept. Um, a third reason why you, may, uh, you might want to consider this tutorial series is that I'm going to teach the math along the way. Now, this has two main advantages. One is that you're obviously going to be learning this math. And two is that you're only going to be learning the math that you need and nothing extra. And I know a lot of you actually like that concept because you don't really want to learn more than you have to. Um, I mean, although I always encourage, uh, if you want to learn more math, go for it. It's always, the more you know, the better. But if you learn the math that you need to succeed in physics, then you already know quite a lot of useful math. A fourth reason why you may want to consider this tutorial series is because I think that um, I'm going to be explaining my thought process when I'm doing the problems. So you're going to effectively learn by example how to think through physics problems. Uh, as somebody who has done like hundreds of problems for every physics topic, you end up uh, getting like a sort of pattern or an intuition on how to do these physics problems and I'm going to be doing them out loud. That way, uh, hopefully, you'll be able to kind of pick up that pattern and that intuition. There's also several reasons why you should be really excited to learn physics. Um, it's a subject that I've come to really like because it's extremely useful. It will make you a much better problem solver, not just in a physics problem solver, but a problem solver in general. And the way that it does that is because physics, for me, it related the uh, math to the real world. And it was the first time, I mean, I always knew how to do math, but I didn't really know what it meant in the real world. And physics, really, to me, it told me, hey, math has a really useful application. Not just not just a little game where you manipulate x's and y's and stuff like that, but it's actually extremely useful for quantitatively describing our, our world. And the last reason is that it's really, really fun. Um, I know that may not seem true at first, but I guarantee you it's extremely fun and it's a really enjoyable subject if you approach it the right way. Uh, it's, and the reason why I say it's fun is because it's kind of like magic. About a certain situation, you only know maybe one or two things. You're given two, one or two known pieces of information and using physics you can figure out almost everything else about that situation. So it lets you make predictions. It lets you find out things that you can't directly measure. 
And I think that's that's pretty cool. Okay, so the way that I'm going to uh, structure this tutorial series is I'm going to try to feed you guys really small chunks of information, but it's critical that I feed you guys whole chunks of information. So I don't want to break it up into fragments. In other words, I don't want to break up physics into pieces that don't make sense. So when I break something up, I'm going to try to make it as small as possible, but while still keeping it like a whole topic. So after every topic that you learn, you feel like you learned something whole and nothing is missing. But I also want to try to keep these pieces as small as possible. So I'm going to try to balance those. Now the first small piece of information that we're going to learn about um, is dimensions and frame of, frames of reference. Now physics is used to describe our world. One branch of physics called kinematics is used to describe the motion of our world. Um, the motion in our world can happen in three different directions. And we call these dimensions. So when I'm describing motion, when I'm telling you about something that's moving, things can move in three spatial directions. We call that, we usually call it the x direction, the y direction, and the z direction. But in space, there are three lines along which you can move. You can either move uh, forward, backwards, we usually call that the y axis or the y direction, or you can move left or right, we usually call that the x uh, axis or the x direction, or you can move up or down, and we usually call that the z axis. So if I were to draw it, it would look something like this. So let's go ahead and write down what a dimension is. The way that I would uh, describe di a dimension, well, a kinematics, first of all, it's description or describing motion. Okay, So we want to describe motion. And a, dim a dimension is uh, a direction in space. Direction in space. Now, this is probably not the best definition, but I'll try to expand on this a little bit. So a direction in space that you can move in. Um, now, as we said, you can either move forward or backwards, right? You can move that way. Or you can move left or right. And then another dimension that I can't really draw is the one that's coming towards you. So that I call up and down. So coming towards you is up, going uh, through the page is down. Now, you can argue and say, Hey, wait a minute. What if I move, uh, for example, in this direction? Is that not another dimension? No, that's not another dimension. Because if you move in that direction, what you're really doing is you're moving a little bit in this dimension, which is the x dimension, and then you're moving a little bit in this dimension, which is the y dimension. So no matter which direction you move in, you're going to be moving in some combination of these three main dimensions. We live in a three-dimensional world. You can only move in some combination of these three dimensions. The way that we name these dimensions is we call the left and right one the x dimension. We call the up and down or, or the forward and backward one the y dimension. And this one that's coming out at you, so imagine a, a line coming out at you, we call that the z dimension. So that's up or down. Once again, kinematics is describing motion. But whenever you describe motion, it's relative to something. And that something we call a frame of reference. So a frame of reference is something that you are moving relative to. For example, uh, if I'm, let's say that basically I'm over here, I'm standing over here, and then there's a flagpole or something here, I guess, okay? So if I tell you that I'm moving this way, what am I moving relative to? I mean, you can't just say that I'm just moving. So basically, usually now, usually when I tell you that I'm moving this way, I mean relative to the ground, I'm moving that way. 
But, for example, let's say that there's another person. So, uh, pretend this person is right over here. And this person is also moving that way. Now, since we're both moving that way, relative to the red person, the blue person is not moving at all, really. Uh, I hope that makes sense. Now, both of these people are moving relative to the ground. But relative to each other, they're not moving. So if I were to say, describe the motion of the blue guy relative to the red guy, you would say that he's not moving at all because they're both moving. So the blue relative to the red or the red relative to the blue, they're not moving. But if I tell you to describe the motion of the blue guy relative to the ground or relative to the flagpole, then you could say that, yes, he is moving in the right or to the right of the flagpole. That's where he's moving. And the red guy as well. He's also moving to the right of the flagpole. So the key thing to get out of this is that motion is always relative. There's no such thing as, you know, you can't just say that I'm just moving relative to everything. No, that doesn't make any sense because you can't. It's always moving relative to some point. And that point we call frame of reference. Now, usually the frame of reference that we pick is uh, the coordinate axis. Now, once again, this is the coordinate axis. So the purpose of this coordinate axis is to describe the dimensions that we can move in and our frame of reference. So what is our frame of reference in the coordinate axis? The frame of reference is right over here. It's that. Oh, I, I don't know why it disappeared. There we go. Okay, it's that red dot right over there. So whenever we're describing motion in physics, we're describing it relative to the origin of our axis. And then, uh, so the first thing that you do in physics when you're describing motion is you pick a point that you're going to describe it relative to. And that's just as easy as putting your coordinate axis, putting the origin where you want. So you get to describe uh, relative to what you want to explain your motion. Okay, so to quickly summarize, right now we're going to be focusing on the aspect of physics that uh, focuses on describing motion. So we don't care about why these things are moving. All we're concerned about is to describe how they're moving and where they're moving, how fast they're moving, etc. So describing motion is what we're focusing on right now. Now, as we said, motion can happen in three dimensions. We usually represent these dimensions as axes. The x, the y, and the z. The x is left, right. The y is forward, backward. The z is up, down. Because motion will happen uh, at some combination of these three dimensions. Now, if the motion, uh, we'll, we'll get there later, uh, forget about this. Um, and then we talked about the frame of reference. The frame of reference is basically relative to the point that you are just going to describe your motion. And in terms of our uh, coordinate axis, we said that the origin, this dot, red dot right over here, is going to be your frame of reference. So the coordinate axis serves two purposes when you're describing motion. It describes your frame of reference, and it also describes your directions. You get to pick both your frame of reference, and you also get to pick your directions. Um, now, when you're only moving in one of these directions, so if you're only moving in one of the dimensions, so in other words, if you're only moving in the x direction, or the y direction, or the z direction, only one of those, not any combination of, of them, but only one of them, then we call that one-dimensional motion. Uh, because you're only moving in one dimension. And we're going to actually be talking about one-dimensional motion in the next video. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.